Hi, this is a short video to accompany a post over on jfrmilner.wordpress.com where I'm going to show you how to use an Arduino to control multiple power sockets. The idea of this project is pretty simple. I want to try and reduce the amount of devices I have left on, even if that's standby when I'm not around. Pretty much down to these two guys here. First up we have a Technicolor router, or as the American viewers may call one, a router. This particular router is pretty useful for me because we have a USB port on the side. I believe these are for doing media content sharing or something like that. But it's quite useful because it uh, supplies power to uh, an Arduino. Here we have um, an Arduino Mega and we have an Ethernet Shield as well. Now this guy is pretty much the heart of the project. This guy is going to allow me to turn on and off. Uh, multiple power sockets and it also allows me to report on the state of power sockets as well through a little web service. I mean you could say there's probably a rudimentary web server in itself. Um, okay, what else do we have? We have here a little breadboard, a couple of points of interest here. We have a um, transistor. This guy is wired up with a couple of cables here, and we see we follow them down. It goes to this computer here, which is acting as a media server. What they actually do is they go to a um, well, the power button on the front there, uh, those two cables. So if I trigger that transistor, what it's effectively doing is it's pressing that power button in, making the connection, and turning the computer on. Okay. Uh, I've also configured the, uh, the operating system to um, shut down should the power button again be pressed when the OS is up. So this allows me to gracefully shut down the, uh, the media server as well uh, remotely should I need to. Okay, next up we have a couple of cables here. Follow these through, they go to again this computer. Uh, what these do is they go to the front power LED. It's pretty crude but the idea is simple and it works. If the computer is on there's going to be uh, power going to that front LED and I use the Arduino to read the power. If I detect one, then again, that will be reported on the web portal. Okay, um, second point of interest really on this uh, breadboard is this guy. This is an RF transmitter. Now, I've blogged about these before in previous posts where I capture RF signals and retransmit them. It's basically what we're going to be doing again. And uh, again, I'll be using uh, uh, the four gang. I used the previous example, which uh, is RF controlled. Um, they started doing these now in uh, a single socket uh, variety as well. Uh, I've got a couple here, uh, well four here even, um, for a later project. Okay, worth mentioning as well, uh, we've got um, a couple of IP PDUs. I uh, managed to salvage these from work, from a project that never took place. Uh, why do I have two of them? Well, one of them, uh, the bottom one, uh, is connected up to the mains. And this top one is connected to a small PDU, which I've got down here. Now that's to prevent uh, power outages when my systems are on. Unfortunately, that's quite common where I am. Now, because these are IP PDUs, yes, they do have web interfaces apiece. Uh, but as you can imagine, if I wanted to turn on, say, a device on the top one and a couple on the bottom, that's two web interfaces I need to log into to be able to do what I need. Now, I can't really say that's a fault with the manufacturer of these devices. After all, they're not really designed for such frequent use. But um, in the actual code that I've put on my Arduino Mega, um, I've got uh, a quick solution for that. Okay, uh, what do we have uh, connected up to these? Uh, well, you can see that from first off, we're on the, uh, on the RF console. We've got uh, a small lamp, a little webcam, and uh, the main desktop setup as well I've got. Okay, so here you can see we have four screens and the main desktop computer. Right, okay, let's go on to the actual web demo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this iPad here. Um, I could use any mobile device to be honest, but uh, uh, iPads have a fairly big screen and I'll do for the video. Okay, what I've done is I've saved a shortcut on the wallpaper itself. So if I just bring that up, this basically loads up the web page uh, from the Arduino. This is completely self contained within the Arduino. The actual interface is pretty self-explanatory. We've got the sources we've mentioned already. So we've got the, uh, the Arduino Direct, we've got the, uh, the RF modules, and then the IP PDUs. I've also got sets, and I'm going to just demonstrate those at the end of the video. Okay, and devices, again, pretty obvious. It's what's plugged into what. Power state, I've got a couple of, uh, couple of styles here, really, on power. 
Uh, we've got uh, the red icons, they will actually show power state, and we'll see that when we turn some devices on and off. Unfortunately, the, uh, the RF modules don't have power state uh, reporting, so um, they're literally just on and off commands. I've also got uh, a ping column here on the right next to the media server that I spoke about already. Um, it's handy to know when the actual uh, operating system is up and running, so it's ready to be remoted into. Um, and basically all I'm doing is getting the Arduino to send a ping packet every now and again to the uh, media server when it's uh, in a powered up state. Uh, I've got another column as well. This is sort of just a work in progress. I could probably say a debug column at the minute. I'm just using it, the top right hand column there, to report on the voltage. That's the voltage of the LED uh, at the minute. As you can see, here we have uh, zero volts. Okay, let's start with something simple. Uh, we have on Energini number four, we have a little lamp. So let's uh, click that up. And we can see that fire up. Excellent. Now let's uh, turn it off. Great, and we have a little Foscam camera on one. I'll fire that up. We can see the lights firing up there as well on that. That's excellent. Okay, let's give one of the uh, the other devices. Let's do the um, Arduino uh, directly connected media server there. Okay, which is guy down there. So let's press that power button. We can immediately hear the fans firing up. I'm not sure if that's going to be picked up on the video itself, but. Uh, once the actual computer is fired up, you'll see that the interface will quickly change to a little green icon. And there we go. Ping still offline. It'll take a few moments for the OS to boot up. But uh, we can see the hard drive lights and whatnot going on there. So that's definitely going to happen soon. Okay, um, as for these screens, um, even still, with this project as a whole, turning on five separate uh, items uh, every time I want to use my desktop computer can become a bit of a chore so uh, that's where these sets come in and it's quite simply just uh, a collection of uh, of devices that I've got set up so we can see that uh, we have uh, monitors one through four there so uh, if we just click that over uh, first of all sorry I need to turn on the IP PDU itself okay that's that done just check to make sure that's on yep and okay let's do the set Excellent. What I've done for the uh, the computer on the right there is basically said that if uh, if it detects the power state where there was none before, to actually turn the computer on. There's quite a few settings you can uh, you can alter in the BIOS, uh, such as the one uh, such as the media center I mentioned earlier. Being able to uh, detect if the button's been pressed to shut the computer down. Okay. Well, that pretty much sums it up. I hope that's been helpful, and uh, please check out the blog um, where I'll have uh, more details of the uh, processes used uh, and the uh, the code itself. All right, thanks for viewing.